What's good, Power Director Peeps? It's Tablet Tuesday, and today I'm going to tell you all about the latest updates for Power Director Mobile. If you're new to my channel and you want to learn how to use Power Director, click the subscribe button and click on the bell to get notifications every time I upload content to YouTube. As of the date of this video, Power Director was on version 6.9.1, and I think you're gonna like the newness, people. I think you're gonna like the newness. First things first, they added a settings option all the way at the bottom of the screen. Now, what this means to you is that you don't have to jump into a project every time you want to go ahead and change the settings for the program. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Each project now shows you the duration of the project up in the right hand corner of the thumbnail. In the past, if there was a clip at the beginning of the timeline, the only way you could get a clip in front of that was to drag and drop the clip at the front of the timeline. Now, and when I say now, I mean now, you can just place your playhead at the beginning, tap on the media, Go to where you want, tap on that clip that you want to use, tap the plus sign, and bam, it'll add it right to the front without you having to drag and drop it. Beautiful. Before this version of the program, you could only add some effects to items in the overlay tracks. Now, you can add effects to any overlay video or image that you want. If I tap on one of these overlay items here, you see that I now have the effects option. Tap on that. I can go crazy, baby. Go crazy. Look at all the effects. Look at the effects. You just tap on one. Uh, tap on the option. See if I can change the degree. All that goodness. It's a beautiful thing. It is a beautiful thing. Remember when you used to go to get your clips in Adam and you couldn't see the name of your clips? Gone. Gone. We can now enable the option to see the file names or we can disable that option and just leave the file names hidden. If you tap on the cog here and then tap on settings, you now have an option here that says display file name in media library. Right now it's on, so if I tap back, tap on my files, you see that all my file names are at the top of all of these. If I go ahead and tap back, tap back, go to the cog settings. And if I disable this option, then when I go to my files, you see there is no name at the top of the thumbnails. I like to see the name, so I'm gonna leave that on, baby. I'm gonna leave that on. Well, while we're talking about settings, let's talk about another beautiful setting. And that is the option to have the edit icon appear or not have the option to have the edit icon appear and go straight to the edit options whenever you tap on the clip. You'll see here, if I tap on this clip, it just opens up all the edit options at the bottom of the screen. Well, there used to be an edit icon that used to pop up and now you have the option bringing that back. If you tap on the cog, tap on settings, it says open tool menu when selecting an object in a timeline. I'm going to turn it off. And now if I tap on an item in a timeline, it has the edit icon and I can tap on that edit icon and it'll bring up those same options. For me, it's a lot better to go ahead and just speed up my workflow, take that extra tap out of it by leaving that enabled. And then whenever I tap on one of the clips, it'll just bring up the edit options. I like that a lot better. Now, a brother like me saved the best for last, or at least what I think is the best. We now have the option to use keyframes to control the opacity, rotation, position, and scale, which can all be used to animate and move clips and images all over the place, zoom in, zoom out, all that great stuff. I'm loving it. As of the making of this video, the keyframe option is available for transform, opacity, blending, and mask. So let's say I tap on this clip at the bottom and I tap on transform keyframe. Then you'll see a little keyframe option on the right hand side of the screen. And if I move my playhead here to the end, let's just say somewhere near the end, 
and I tap on this keyframe, it'll show, hey, there's a keyframe there. That's the position, the scale, the rotation, the opacity that I want for this clip. If I move my playhead in a little bit, I could add another keyframe and it'll stay at that same position because I didn't move anything. But then if I move it to the beginning and I drag this all the way over to the side here, it automatically added a new keyframe because it knew I changed that position and I'm already in the keyframe option. So now what will happen is this, when I hit play, this little clip at the bottom, this little picture in picture is gonna go across the screen and then it's gonna stay over there on the other side. It's a little laggy because a lot of stuff going on, but you get the picture. That's just one thing you can do with these keyframes, baby. That's just one example of the newness. Freaking loving this thing. I want all you guys out there to keep your eyes peeled for a keyframe tutorial in the future. And those are the version 6.9.1 updates for the Power Director Mobile video editor app. If you like what you see, I'll leave a link to try out Power Director Mobile in the video description. I know you want more Power Director love, so be sure to click on these videos to watch more of my content and smash my cartoon face to subscribe. Don't forget to drop me a comment and a like down below.